before you can start fishing and catching fish, and there's a ton of other stuff that actually needs to take place. This week, um, we check out the ins and outs of Madagascar. That's all the stuff you pretty much need to do before you can uh, start fishing. Trains, cars, yachts, boats, the whole story. With any fishing trip, it's very important to have a basic plan. You've got to, you've got to know exactly what you're going to be doing and allow yourself some freedom after that. It's very important to be flexible. So from our point of view, to actually be based on the, on the yacht, use that as a base and then fish off the tender with first prize and as the situation changes we could change that plan. I came to see how this lure was swimming and I didn't think it was swimming very nicely and suddenly this thing ate it right here by the tender. I'm telling you. The best fishing trips in my experience are those where we've actually planned to be on the water 24-7. It's very important. It's important to look at your location, how far away you are from the fishing areas, because it takes time getting there. Also things like preparing food, washing clothes, just general housekeeping also eats up a lot of time. And when you're paying a lot of money to go to a place, you don't want to be wasting most of it doing the mundane things that eat up your fishing time. When you're based on a yacht, um, you can fish over the side, you can fish 24-7. If you get tired, you can go and have a quick nap and uh, more often than not you'll hear a couple of shouts and screams from the deck and somebody will be onto a fish and you'll be up and fishing again. So it's very important to think about that. Think about how accessible the fishing is. Uh, Madagascar you know the, the tender boat is is actually critical I mean if you, you you're sort of going to limit yourself if you if you're fishing off the yacht so yeah you know it's, it's worth all the extra effort a little bit of money extra money that's involved but, yeah you, you, you've got to make sure that you do whatever it takes to, to make sure you've got that tender boat Something just chowed this thing. On the bottom. On the bottom. Something just huge just chowed this thing. Madagascar is, is, is one of the most incredibly beautiful, special places you, you would ever get to visit. Um, 
but you know once you get off the tender boat onto onto the land you you realize how rugged and harsh it actually is um, so it's super important that you you know you've always got all the right gear when you step onto the land you know a, a great pair of, of shoes is, is critical and um, yeah you know you need to be of sound mind when you when you're walking around and you need to be paying attention to make sure that you you know you don't injure yourself in in, in an area remote as, as this. Often on a fishing trip you'll soon identify patterns and you'll know when the the sort of low periods are or the slow times and during those slow times it's really amazing to be able to go and explore places go and have a look at things that you haven't seen before because it might be a once in a lifetime thing I mean for us to get close to those fox bats was just amazing it, it, you probably won't do that again unless you're going to go to Australia or the Seychelles so whenever you get a gap whenever the fishing's a little bit slow try and do something a bit different it's always interesting When you're in a place like Madagascar, you and if, if you've got an open mind, you you know you'll be amazed at what you can see. You know, it's not always about the fishing. It's it's actually just when you pay attention. You know, there's the incredible sea life. You can go and snorkel. Um, you know, there's there's whales that you'll get to see. the little local villages and, and, and the source of fresh water and, and watching the local people you know how they you know they have they have a super hard life and, and the extent that they have to go to to actually get fresh drinking water um, it's really really incredible but it but it's totally worth it and it's just if you have an open mind and you're paying a bit of attention yeah you'll be amazed at what you get to see but it's awesome I mean this is what life's been like for the last a couple of thousand years here, yeah. except they didn't have plastic water containers. Life is just full of different experiences and when you go on a trip like this, it's just immense. There's just so many of them, it's unbelievable. In a place like Madagascar where the, there is a, an incredible abundance of fish, um, you, you've got to make sure that you're seriously prepared and you've got the, the right gear to, to do the job and enough tackle to cover your losses because, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's, you'd be amazed at how much tackle you can lose when the fish are boiling. So preparation is, is everything.
uh, hook went straight, pulled the hook straight. That was a big fish. People often ask how many of a particular type of lure or type of fishing they should be taking with them. And uh, it's never very easy to answer. It's, it's, the safest way is to probably work out how many days you're going to be there and try and sort of budget accordingly. But on any trip, um, you can try and forecast and if the fishing really hots up in a certain area and if you're in a bad place where you're losing tackle, you can actually go through everything that you've taken for the whole trip in one day. Nice healthy little blizzard. this show we're looking at the ins and outs of Madagascar. Yeah, any trip is, uh, you know, it's, it's obviously uh, about a sense of place, but, um, you know, one of the most important things I've realized over the years is that it's uh, a great deal of it and, and, and the fun element of a trip is about the people that you actually have on a trip and um, yeah we've been fortunate enough to always have a, an incredible a, a bunch of guys with us and around us and you know that makes for great laughter and yeah just uh, you know the, the opportunity to completely relax and just uh, let your hair down and, and have a good laugh and completely unwind. <laughs>
Fishing off the tender in Madagascar is, is quite an incredible thing, and just from a point of view of the, the, the volume and species um, that one gets to encounter along the way, it's, it's absolutely mind blowing. Jigging worked out, man. <laughs> Jeez, it's a lot of hard work. Huh. Pretty strange fishing. Hey, Zaka. Shiny King, I'll tell you what. Give me a rib. What type of king is it? Then the bubble is thick, man. Hey! <laughs> Another big thing in, uh, with fishing a foreign place is, um, you know, is, is having a good captain. I mean, um, you know, we were fortunate enough to have Paul uh, on uh, this trip to Madagascar, and um, you know, having a captain that uh, is, a, is a very capable and competent fisherman that knows the area extremely well is um, it's almost invaluable. Was one thing. Hundred. Oh, I'm almost sure now that I think it's a GT. And I've got a broken eye on it. Have a look there. It's not a big amber. It's a very nice size GT. That just from a GT. If you've got a good captain, you're going to catch a lot of fish. Often there's, there's a situation where you need to decide whether to fish off the land or off the boat. And uh, besides the personal challenge of catching a fish off terra firma, it's obviously a lot easier and more interesting to film off the land, so that's generally our first choice. If we can catch a fish off the land, if we can film on the land, that's what we'll do. Other than that, you have to be on a boat for certain shots.
did a, a lot of fishing off submarine rock and it's it's one of those gems of a place. It's really, really special. Submarine Rock on Madagascar is just one of those epic places where, in our experience, that short period of time that we had there, we saw tuna, we saw kuta, we saw whales around us, it was unbelievable. And yet, talk to the skipper and it was pretty quiet compared to where it usually is. Imagine being there on a day when it's really firing. I mean, that just keeps me awake at night. That place is unbelievable. And it's, you know, we all know that with fishing you have good times and bad times. Um, but that's one of those places where you're going to have a hell of a lot more good times than bad times. Leaving a place like, uh, like Madagascar, there's always questions in your mind. What if this? What if that had happened? And uh, time constraints are also a big issue. It was very frustrating to actually not be able to follow through with something we identified when we were catching the cooter and the bluefin kingies and that so close to the land off Coral Island. I mean, we were literally throwing the spoons almost onto the rocks and every now and then we'd actually throw them onto dry land and wind them back and literally a meter or two from the shore get smashed. Imagine if we'd actually set ourselves up on those rocks. And that would have just been absolutely amazing. Yeah, there's uh, absolutely no better feeling in the world than being completely fished out. Absolutely dead tired and just with a smile on your face and uh, such beautiful reflections of the day. And yeah, going to sleep knowing that tomorrow you're going to do it all over again. Yeah, Madagascar is a, it's, it's an incredible place and um, yeah, you know, as far as bucket lists go, it's, it's definitely one of the places that you need to visit. Um, if you ever get the opportunity and have the opportunity to go to Madagascar, yeah, don't, don't let it up. Grab it and go. Madagascar is definitely one of those places that needs to be on any angler's bucket list, especially if he enjoys the volume of fish that, that there is there. There's just an immense volume of fish and lots of different fish and the scenery is unbelievable. Next show we have a look at the ins and outs of fishing in Angola.